Well, welcome, everybody, to another edition of Lewis at Large. Yours truly, Warner Lewis from the Flight Deck. And, of course, that means some smart talk radios in your future in this segment. Uh, very pleased to have with us uh, Executive Director of the Ballad Center, Christy Dobson, uh, who has been Executive Director there for several months but has a long history uh, with that organization, and we will talk more about that uh, when we get started here. And uh, again, the Ballard Community Services, they're a nonprofit organization. Primary mission is to provide an affordable, high quality early education program and essential basic life assistance to low income families and individuals in need. Uh, they have recently uh, expanded their partnerships uh, with another organization in town. Lots to talk about. Christy, how are you, my friend? I'm good. Thank you so much. Well, we're very pleased to have you here. Let's do this. Let's do a little bit better setup for you. If you would, uh, Christy, uh, share with our Lewis at Large listeners uh, a little bit about your background and your history with the organization. Okay. Well, um, I was a KU graduate, theater and film, and then I went to Seattle for about 10 years, Warner, and I started uh, working in nonprofits. And so my entire career has been arts and advocacy. I've worked with the homeless. I've worked with, um, back here in Lawrence, with in sexual assaults, rape crisis. I've worked with in domestic violence. But I've always worked with kids. Um, that's kind of always been my, my focus in my career. Got my master's degree at Kansas State University in drama therapy, which is um, it's kind of a unique situation. K-State has one of the only three programs for drama therapy in the country, and so I just I, I jumped at that. Got my master's degree and then started working in Lawrence uh, with youth at the Art Center, City Youth Theater, uh, worked at Gadigee Safe Center for a while and did arts outreach, and, and basically always working with kids and always trying to solve social issues through the arts, through theater and film. Was on the board at Penthouse years ago um, because uh, I'd had experience with low income, uh, you know, with that demographic, with the homeless, and was on the board when we merged Penthouse to Ballard Center. So um, since then, we, it's been Ballard Community Services, which is Ballard Center and Penthouse. But then kind of came back to, to Ballard um, early this year. The, the board was looking for an executive director, and they wanted to kind of move forward and put somebody in place to to expand and make some make some things work and so I started in January and it's been um, it's been kind of crazy <laughs> kind of fun crazy cool lots of challenges um, I think nonprofits throughout our community are, are facing budget cuts and um, you know shifting and in, in funding streams so we've had to get really creative and that's where I'm at what about, uh, again, the Ballard Center has sort of morphed, uh, not necessarily in its mission, but in terms of its size and, and some of the services that are offered. A explain to our listeners, if you would now, who falls under or is partnered with Ballard Center as of today? Okay. Well, Ballard Center, the, the low-income preschool in North Lawrence, has always been a building that serves children. I mean, think historically. We have 45 kids in our building, and all of our families, 80% of our families, are um, are struggling at the at the poverty level. So, you know, talking about, if you're looking in Lawrence, 36% of our kids in Douglas County are at the, uh, the low and the low lunch program. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of poverty with our children in Douglas County, that, those are the families we serve over here at Ballard. Penhouse in East Lawrence has historically been, like since the 70s, a place in that neighborhood where everyone can come together and find resources. So it's been about clothing, it's been a food pantry, um, it's been commodities for seniors, there was a prescription program, there's backpacks for kids, there's Adopt-A-Family at Christmas, there's Emergency Services Council. We partner with other agencies in town to provide people, uh, you know, at the beginning of the month when they're about to be evicted and they need rent assistance, we help with that and or uh, utility bills. So Penthouse is people helping people, and it's really a unique neighborhood resource center. Um, Penthouse lost funding. The, the agency, Ballard Community Services, lost funding this year, and we, we had to make some hard decisions, basically, to put all of our funding in place over here at Ballard because we have kiddos in place. I couldn't possibly lose my funding here. So then, therefore, Penthouse kind of lost um, a chunk of change that we had been relying upon. So we decided to get creative and turn Penthouse into um, kind of a collective. And we, 
we were seeking partners, partnerships. And so we found Shine um, with Sun Cedar, and they need space. They're operating out of a garage currently, and Shine has been running that operation on his own and really needed to, to make some changes and expand. And I said, come to Penthouse. And um, I couldn't be more excited about this partnership because it, it really is a perfect marriage of, of what we're both doing in our organizations. We're serving the same folks. You know, at Penthouse, we're serving people every day who are coming in looking for help, looking for some case management around um, jobs or housing. They're looking for clothing. They're looking for getting back to work items. They're working, you know, looking to, to talk about ESC. You know, they need help getting situated in an apartment and paying their bills. All of those, it's the same people. We're talking about people who are coming out of the shelter and or the jails. Um, and those are the folks that Shine will employ. So it's, it's, it's really a great partnership. And also, the other exciting part is that the sheriff's office wants to share space at Penthouse as well. And so they will be renting office space from me at Penthouse uh, to work with their folks. So um, it, it's exciting. It's, it's a really unique use of that space, I think. It's fine-tuning what we're doing over there at Penthouse. We also have um, – we're going to put a diaper bank in the building. We have um, – basic needs, and that's um, Elizabeth Stevens, a gal who has a, a long history as a social worker in town. She wants to house a diaper bank at Penthouse. So it is a wraparound services um, model and all of us working together to serve to serve our community at a, at a much more fine-tuned, uh, fine-tuned way. So what you really have, again, just to, to go back and focus a little bit on the, 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 the Sun Cedar Penthouse division, so to speak, of Ballard Community Centers, you have Penthouse kind of growing out, uh, maybe to accommodate uh, those sort of seeking employment and reentry work uh, when they come out of incarceration or dealing with other issues. Then you have Sun Cedar, who is now expanding their employment services out to include the services offered by Penthouse for some really nice synergy, it sounds like. It is. We, we, we will really work together. And, and you know, so Sun Cedar comes to Penthouse. Penthouse has a history of social service and neighborhood connection in Lawrence, you know, back into, I think we opened in 1969. So there's all of this programming already in place to serve the community. And then, you know, we benefit because Sun Cedar moves in and has this this back-to-work program, you know, so folks who are coming through Penthouse have the opportunity to work, you know, to actually put some things in place and, and get a job. So, you know, we're not only having folks coming through every day and, and doing, you know, I need some help with this, that, or the other. Actually, we can put you in place. You know, we can put you in a program where, where you might, you know, put something on your resume that hasn't been there before. Again, if you just joined us, yours truly, Warner Lewis from the Flight Deck of Lewis at Large Radio. We're in the middle of a segment, a uh, good one here, going with uh, Christy Dobson. She's the Executive Director of Ballard Community Services, uh, which uh, bring quite a bit to this community. Ballard Center, uh, Sun Cedar at Penn House, uh, uh, really trying very, very hard, uh, working with limited resources to uh, bring some pretty serious uh, and important services to the community. Christy, you know, funding is, you probably wake up, that's the that's the thing that keeps you probably awake most nights is is funding and how do we sustain these important services. Share with us a little bit again um, some of those challenges, um, where you see light at the end of the tunnel and where you see ongoing challenges. Well, the light for me at the end of the tunnel um, with the new program partnership at Penthouse is that we are talking about it's, it's a social entrepreneurship um, uh, at its finest, you know, people all over the country are talking about reentry right now. Everybody's talking about expanding jails and or not expanding jails and or what do we do with folks and re- recidivism and how do we solve some of these problems before people get stuck in that system and they just keep going back and back and back. And and what Sun Cedar does is really offer an opportunity for someone to, to truly get back on their feet, you know, get to work. And the, the other part of the penthouse um, programming that we, we're putting in place is we'll have groups, we'll have therapeutic groups, we'll have... Know, the moral recognition group and, and uh, learning how to keep a job, learning how to accept authority, learning how to um, dress and be ready for success and, and do interviews. We'll have 12-step programming, and we'll have the sheriff's office coming in with their staff to work with their folks and do their parole meetings or their probation meetings. And really, we're talking about Penthouse is kind of a satellite now, you know, from the shelter and or the jail where you come in and you get some some problems solved, you know, that the work that they're doing in reentry um, here in Lawrence is is so innovative and exciting. And I, I, I'm hoping that what we're doing at Penthouse 
kind of shines a light around the country and that we can kind of be seen as a model for what to do in partnership, right, in collaboration in your community to really solve a problem. You know, we say it's it's really walk the talk. So I am hoping that that in itself opens up funding streams, probably from sources that we haven't seen before. You know, it's not just we're putting a Band-Aid on someone's problem. You know, when you, we talk a lot about cycle of homelessness and and how to how to break people out of that cycle this is this is an actual answer this is an actual result you know this is going to have an outcome that we can really measure so i am just hoping that the community sees that and that you know maybe larger funding um, institutions think it's a great idea maybe other businesses think it's a great idea i mean clearly if you're helping someone get a job and get back on their feet what what kind of money are we saving in the long run and for the community itself you know we're keeping people out of jail because because they have an option, then what is the impact of that financially on on Lawrence, you know, on our community? So my hope is that uh, we're doing a GoFundMe right now. It's online. You can find us if you go to either one of our websites or Facebook pages, um, you know, Ballard or Sunseater. Um, find us. Check out the GoFundMe. We are trying to raise enough funds to get everything started, to get the partnership in place for a year. We're just, we're, we're hoping to move Sunseater in and kind of, launch them at penthouse and then see where it goes you know i mean sun theater is it's you know it's it's a small manufacturing company they're making things that they're selling online um so he he sun theater shine um you know we want to see this business grow and for him to be fully sustainable um and so you know then the pieces that that penthouse Penthouse is a nonprofit, and we will continue to try to find funding for our organization. Um, but Sun Cedar can kind of take off. Well, again, and Sun Cedar, uh, Shine Adams has done a remarkable job uh, working very hard on his own and working with some very dedicated people. And yeah. this seems like mm-hmm. a neat synergy that gives them some additional boost, gives them additional exposure, additional space uh, yep. for the work that they do, manufacturing everything from. Uh, small uh, tree-shaped air fresheners to clothes hangers to whatever out of cedar, and it employs uh, people that are really looking and and working hard at a second chance, and it's a unique opportunity. Uh, Maybe a a larger question or or a different question, not specifically about Ballard Community Services, is one – to you as an executive director, when you look across the sort of the nonprofit landscape in Lawrence, undoubtedly there are some organizations that provide – either redundant or duplicative services as one another. And I'm curious, as difficult as it would seem for for some of those agencies possibly to merge together for some synergies and some a little bit of efficiency, does that make sense or is it good that there are multiple agencies serving the same basic concept? Well, you know, the thing is about when we talk about duplicating services, um, the thing about Lawrence that, that made me um, – folks, you know, civilians who aren't in the trenches doing social services every day don't know is that we collaborate really, really well in Lawrence. These agencies, you know, Just Food and uh, and the Shelter and Penthouse, Ballard, ECAN, Salvation Army, we're all talking all the time. We all, I mean, Catholic Charities is one of them as well. We have, um, you know, we have software in place. We're tracking people. We know where they're going for food, and then we know where they're going for clothing, and we know where they're going for case management. Housing is another one. Um, we're all connecting around, um, it, it could be that we're connecting around the same people, the same families, the same individuals, but we know what they're doing. We, we, for the most part, know who needs what, who's on the list for housing, right? Who is a mom who's coming out of uh, Willow Domestic Violence uh, Center and needs to come to Penthouse and get clothing for herself so she can go back to work. We're all pretty pretty much aware of who our clients are, and, and um, it is pretty amazing how well everybody tracks. Um, now, are some of those individuals or families going to the same places twice for the same amount of food or, uh, you know, are we actually duplicating per person? You know, like, so someone needs a service and they get it from two different places. Does that happen? Occasionally, I would say, although um, in my experience here in Lawrence, just food handles the food, right? And housing handles the housing and Catholic and Social Service League handle um and, you know, clothing at the rummage shop and at the social service league. I mean, we're all pretty much aware of what everybody else is doing. And I have to tell you, when Penthouse, when we when we got our funding cut, um, we had to shift money over to Ballard, and it was a United Way 
funding stream that was that was cut um, this year, I pulled all the partners in who were doing anything remotely related to what we're doing at Penthouse. So I brought in housing and ECAN and Salvation Army and Just Food and the shelter and all of our friends. And I said, okay, what if I closed Penthouse? Because I don't have any money anymore. <laughs> I mean, my budget's been pretty well cut in half at Penthouse specifically. And they said, no way can you close Penthouse because we could not absorb the numbers of people that you are seeing every day. We have over 80 people coming through our doors at Penthouse every day. Those same 80 people might go someplace else to talk about housing with housing or just food for food or, you know, as I've said, um, they're walking or hoofing around town to get what they need on a daily basis. But closing Penthouse was not an option according to my partners. So, Talking about duplication of services, well, yeah, sometimes that's going to happen because we have that many people in Lawrence who need services. Do you all feel like, and you kind of alluded to this, but but in the various nonprofits, that you do have a handle on the size of the community, for example, that is homeless, the size of the community that is looking sort of routinely or regularly for clothing or food? Do you, do you have a sense, as they say, you can get your arms around who that population really is? You know, uh, sometimes I think we do, and then sometimes I think we really don't, Warner, because I do think there's a lot of poverty that, that stays hidden in Lawrence. We do know that in Lawrence, um, 36% of our kids are at the free and reduced lunch program, but I would say that probably the numbers of kids, of children, we have a backpack program at Penn House um, where we send kids back to school every fall with a full backpack ready to go with all of their supplies. We probably only see 2% of the kiddos that need help at Penn House. So, uh, we no. I, I mean, I feel like we may know what the numbers are, or um, have an estimation that you know this many number of kids is, is living at the poverty level. But I think the problem is: are we getting to them? Are we able to access, or, or do they have access to us? Right? Are families coming out and getting the services they need um, the most effectively? I guess is the way I would phrase it. Um, so getting our arms around how many kids are living in poverty in Lawrence, I mean, 36% at the poverty level, that's a huge number for a city like Lawrence. I mean, I think that's pretty thats pretty sad. Um, so, yeah, I mean, finding ways to collaborate better and do partnerships such as, you know, what we're trying to do at Penn House. I mean, with the school district, I, I would say, we need to partner better with them. Um, they need to know what the numbers really are. If you call the school district and say how many kids are homeless, I don't think they know. I think they try to know. I mean, I think everybody has has good intentions, but uh, one of the theories is that kids who are homeless, especially older kids, you know, adolescents and teenagers, they're not necessarily going to disclose that they are homeless, right? Who wants to go into that system? Right. If there's a if there's a kid who's you know your family ends up homeless and heading out to the shelter. Um, we've all shared stories. I mean, any case manager or social worker in town will tell you there's probably a kid who's couch surfing. You know, teenagers don't want to end up at that shelter. They're teenagers. They're in high school, right? They may come to high school without shoes and without a coat, but they're not going to volunteer information, um, I don't think, um, that they're homeless. And I think there are more poor kids in Lawrence than than we do have our arms around. I think the numbers that we have are about the free and reduced lunch program. Um, But I think there's some numbers that that we're not seeing for sure. You touched on earlier a little bit of collaboration possibly with the police department and with other authorities. What about with uh, communication that you have with maybe, as you were just talking about, with the school system or individual teachers or educators that see these kids, you know, several hours out of the day and also may have a different, uh, more holistic view of them? Well, I think that that, that goes back to what I was saying before about collaboration in Lawrence. Um, I think it's actually pretty, pretty great. I mean, we talk to social workers in our elementary schools um, and our principals in our elementary schools here at Ballard because we're sending our children to kindergarten, right? We go up to to four or five pre-K. So our job at Ballard is to take care of children until they're ready to go to kindergarten. We connect very well with... um, with the administrators in the in the elementary schools, but but yeah, I mean, I think talking uh, case managers and social workers in Lawrence and executive directors like myself and my administrators and my education director, we do a pretty darn good job of of talking to one another. You know, talking to the social workers who may be working with the kid or talking to the principals. One of my board members is the the principal over at Sunflower. You know. Um, I do think as far as, you know, (laughs) duplicating or not duplicating services around children, um, we're all talking pretty regularly about 
what's going on with our kids and how to, to wrap our arms around them and, and solve some of their problems. I think in early childhood in Lawrence, as I've gathered just in my brief tenure in this position, there's a bit of a lack of um, spaces. There's not enough space for early childhood placements in Lawrence. All of our preschools are full. They all have waiting lists. Um, I have kiddos here at Ballard that I, I think need more services, and so I'm constantly trying to figure out how to serve their needs. Is there another place for them where they could um, have more one-on-one care? That's an issue. Um, but as far as communicating and, yeah, connecting with, with the school district and, uh, you know, and therapists. I have a therapist on staff now. Um, mental health providers. I think we all do a pretty good job of talking and, and reaching out to one another. Funding all of that programming and putting things in place is, is kind of a separate issue. That's where the challenge lies. Well, as we kind of start to wind down here a little bit, again, we're with Christy Dobson. She's Executive Director of Ballard Community uh, Services and uh, who do some extraordinary work. Uh, the Ballard Center, uh, Sun Cedar at Penhouse, Penhouse, all of those services, uh, uh, all helping uh, with people that are very dedicated and working extremely hard. Christy, um, sort of look across the landscape or look out into the future a little bit. What do you see as the future? Let's talk specifically uh, of the Ballard Co- Community Services. Uh, a bright future and any changes that you see? You're going through some change right now, but uh, how do you feel about it? Well, um, I'm excited about the Penn Health Partnership, Warner. I really hope it goes. I hope the community goes to that GoFundMe immediately <laughs> and everybody puts in 25 bucks and then, you know, get to our goal. I really want to see that partnership take off. I want Sun Cedar in the building ready to go. I want the sheriff's office to use our space for meetings and gatherings and groups. And um, I really think Penn House is special and unique because it is that neighborhood place of people helping people, and, that, and that's the character of Penn House and the history and the mission over there. So I'm excited about that. I hope we get our funding. I hope the community realizes how important it is and helps us get over that finish line so that it, it can kind of take off, you know. Um, over here at Ballard, I, I think we are uh, focusing our efforts currently on some more a little more therapeutic work with our children. We have kids who are dealing with some crisis and struggle at home, and um you know, we, we work on family connection, but even more importantly, when they're here with us at Ballard, we need people in place to, to wrap around kids and, and face the issues that they are showing here at school. You know, we have some kids who are um, having some behaviors, you know. They deal with a lot of stress and chaos at home, and they, de- and they bring it here, and so we need to be able to, to help them handle and manage that. So I have a part-time therapist on staff here at Ballard, and I think that's fairly unique here in Lawrence. Um, I realized as a therapist when I walked into the building that we had kids who really needed more supports, and so I hired um, a licensed marriage family therapist to be here part-time, you know, and whatever she can do to get down and on the floor in the classrooms and play with a kid who needs extra support really, I think, will go a long way to just helping them have a better day. You know, our job is to take care of these children and have as many good days <laughs> as we possibly can with, with good, solid curriculum in place and wonderful teachers um, who understand their needs and understand how to help them learn and grow. You know, the, in the long run, we want to get them to kindergarten. But while they're here, um, these really early years, we really want them to be nurtured and, and really seen and, and helped and served, you know, meeting them where they're at. So my focus um, here at Ballard is to do just that, you know, to really help my teachers understand some of these ongoing issues with, with our families and how to really better serve the kiddos while they're here during the day. Well, before we get out of here, let's be sure, and uh, if you would, Christy, give us uh, all kinds of ways that people can contact either you, contact the Ballard Community Services, or any of the organizations uh, that, that fall under that banner, and uh, and also tell us a little bit about the link for GoFundMe. Okay, so the GoFundMe, I think we're here, um, uh, May 15th is the day that they will, I think that's our, that was our 30-day uh, window, so May 15th, we need to get all of our funding in by then. Go to sun com. That's uh, that's Sun Cedar, or you can go to BallardCenter.org, or you can go to any either one of our Facebook pages. Um, and the GoFundMe is GoFundMe slash Cedar House, um, or you can call me here at Ballard. I'm at 
842-0729. My extension is 102, and I can tell you more about it. Um, but really, we're kind of all over the interwebs <laughs> right now. We're really trying to push this campaign and push it nationally. Um, you know, we have connections with with press and folks um, all over the country. When Sun Cedar kind of started last year, Shine did a big Kickstarter, and he made connections with people all over the country. He's really um, he's really getting out there as a person who is an innovator and really, um, you know, addressing a problem in a in a, a unique. But you know, is it that unique? He's giving people jobs. <laughs> he's, he's putting people back to work. You know, it's like putting your money where your mouth is. It's a pretty basic need, and he's providing a pretty basic response to that need by just having people come in and work in his wood shop. You know, it's beautifully simple when you think about it. Um, so GoFundMe slash Cedar House or BallardCenter.org or um, SunCedar.com. Those are, the, those are the places to go. Well, I'll tell you what, we uh, really, really appreciate your time and your insights here and sharing uh, the mission uh, and the work that you all do, uh, and also, again, shared by Shine and others uh, involved in Sun Cedar and Penthouse and all those at the Ballard Community Services. Christy, thank you again so much and would love to do a follow-up with you a little bit later. I would love that. Thank you, Warner, for having me. I really appreciate your support. Thanks. You bet. We'll be back with more right after this on Lewis at Large.